Good morning, everyone. Hope you're well uh, and keeping safe. Um, uh, and do let us know if there's anything that you need or anything we can do for you. Uh, the link for our Zoom midweek went out uh, last night. Um, so if you're free, half past seven this Wednesday night, and you'd like to join with us in our midweek as we go further into Mark's Gospel, then please do join us for that. I'm just going to read to you from Mark chapter 3, uh, and verses 13 to 21. And he went up on the mountain and called to him those whom he desired, and they came to him. And he appointed twelve, whom he also named apostles, so that they might be with him, and he might send them out to preach and have authority to cast out demons. He appointed the twelve. Simon, to whom he gave the name Peter, James, the son of Zebedee, and John, the brother of James, to whom he gave the name Boanerges, that is, sons of thunder. Andrew and Philip, and Bartholomew, and Matthew and Thomas, and James, the son of Alphaeus, and Thaddeus, and Simon the Zealot, and Judas Iscariot, who betrayed him. Then he went home, and the crowd gathered again, so that they could not even eat. And when his family heard it, they went out to seize him, for they were saying, He is out of his mind. In this passage, we see the start of something new. We see a significant development uh, in the ministry of Jesus as he calls these 12 disciples from the group of disciples that have already been following him. He, he selects 12 uh, to come to him uh, and to start something new. Uh, 12 is, of course, a significant number in Scripture. Uh, and here in particular, it's significant because it reflects the 12 tribes of Israel that God called out of Egypt to be a nation for him, the 12 sons of uh, of Jacob and what Jesus is saying here is that a new people are being established coming from the old but a new people being established something which will be different in, in nature to what went before and right at the beginning of this what is being established are the foundations of Jesus church he calls Simon and then gives him a new name, Peter, which we know means rock. And Peter, as we will discover as we go through the pages of the gospel, is by no means uh, a kind of solid uh, rock-like figure uh, at this point, nor is he for some time. But his future role is being suggested. That he will give leadership and that he will... Uh, have that rock-like quality on which the church will begin to build. He's not there yet, but his future role is already guaranteed. And so as Jesus begins this new thing, it's interesting to see what it is that these disciples are to do and how they are to begin this new people. And the first thing they are to do is to be with Jesus. It's easy to, to skip over it and miss it there. But what does it say? It says he appointed the twelve so that they might be with him. So their first role is to spend time with Jesus. To get to know him. To allow him to shape them and make them into the disciples he wants them to be. And really for us as Christian disciples, that's our first calling as well, to be with Jesus, to spend time with him, spend time getting to know him, spend time letting him shape us, spend time in his word, spend time in prayer, spend time with Jesus. That's part of what these things are about, these videos. But it's also part of our, should be part of our, our routine to be able to spend time with him. And from spending time with Jesus, the next thing that they are to do is the same as Jesus. They are to be partners with Jesus in his work. He sends them out to do two things, to preach the good news 
and to cast out demons, to preach the good news of his kingdom coming and to demonstrate that that kingdom has arrived by confronting the enemy kingdom in the form of the demons. They are to be Jesus' partners in ministry. That's what he calls them to. To engage in partnership with him in his work. And that's what he calls us to as well. We will not have the title of apostles. That's a particular title for them. But we are called into partnership with Jesus when we follow him. Partnership in his work. The partnership of sharing and demonstrating the good news of Jesus. When you go uh, to the beginning of the book of Acts, you will read there, as Luke writes it, that, that he, he, he talks to Theophilus, who he's written this book to, about his former book, the Gospel of Luke. And he says, in my former book, I told you all the things that Jesus began to do. The implication is that the Acts of the Apostles are the things that Jesus continues to do through his apostles after he has ascended into heaven. And that work is going on now. Jesus is continuing his work through the church, through us, through you, through me. By grace, he calls you and I to be part of his continuing work in the world, declaring the good news of the kingdom, demonstrating it by confronting the powers of evil wherever we see them. It's not a cost-free calling. And we see that in the last couple of verses of the passage that we read because Jesus' own calling was not cost free. His family come and they find him uh, surrounded by these crowds and they are concerned because they think he is he's out of his mind, as they say. They're concerned for his mental health. And the person who follows Jesus will be regarded as, to some degree, nuts in this world. Because uh, the, the Apostle Paul tells us that we, this, this message is foolishness to those who are perishing. Foolishness to the world from the outside. But we who have trusted in Jesus, we who know who he is, why he came and what he's done for us, know that this message is the power of salvation for all who will believe. And so if cost comes with following Jesus it's worth it it's worth every insult it's worth every strange look it's worth every um, every degree of suffering that we might go through for following Jesus because he has called us he has loved us he has saved us and he guarantees our future and our hope so find out the ways today in which he's calling you to partner with him in his work and go on following him. God bless.